Hi everyone, welcome to Last Minute Maths. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a way of rewriting quadratic expressions um, into what's called the completed square form. All right. So before we launch into it, as always, any comments, questions, suggestions, put them in the box below. They're very welcome. And do consider subscribing as I'll be doing many more GCSE and A-level maths videos over the next few days and weeks. All right, so completing the square, how do we go about it? Well, we start with a standard quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c, which is a general form. And we want to rewrite it in a form where you've got a, uh, it's called a binomial term, but let's just say x plus p, something like that, squared and then adjusted, right, to give you the original quadratic back again. Now, just as a starting point, I'm going to say this, I've said it below, but uh, let's say we're going to take out the A as being 1, so a straightforward simple quadratic, all right? Now, the next bit is the proof of where the theory comes from. Some of you will need it. Edexcel um, board does not require this knowledge. You don't have to reproduce it in an exam, but um, a couple of others like Educast and so on, have occasionally brought this up. So if you need it, look at the proof. If you don't, feel free to forward the video a couple of minutes and go to the worked examples below. All right? Okay. So where we're starting is that if we take any standard binomial term, x plus p, and square it, we end up with x squared plus 2px plus p squared. All right? But... Therefore, I mean, if you rearrange that, you find that x squared plus 2px is the x plus p, all squared, minus the p squared, all right? So we're then going to use this result. As I've already said, let a equal 1, um, then substitute for x squared plus bx, all right? So if we say that the x squared plus bx must be the same as x squared plus 2px, that tells us that b equals 2p, it must be the same, and therefore that number p in the brackets that we looked at before must always be half of b, all right? So simple application, half of the b, all right? And so the x squared plus bx in our original quadratic that part alone, just that bit, can be replaced by x plus p squared minus p squared, all right? So whatever p is, you square it and you subtract it. And the rule is, it must always be subtracted. Whether p is positive or negative makes no difference. You square it and subtract it. Okay, right, so now let's jump to an example to actually show how to use this. Let's say I've got a standard um, quadratic here, x squared minus 8x minus 5, all right? And just with a little examination, you'll see that it can't be factorized. Not cleanly. Okay, so we want to rewrite it in a different form. Remember that the b equals minus 8, all right? Remember the sign. You must include the sign. It's not just a number, it's the sign as well, all right? So from what we saw earlier, p must equal whatever b is divided by 2, half of b. So p equals minus 8 over 2 and therefore minus 4, all right? So using that, x squared minus 8x must equal x minus 4, all squared, and then minus, remember, subtract always, the minus 4 squared, and that minus 4 squared is 16, all right? So the full expression changes to this, x minus 4, all squared, minus the minus 4 squared, minus 
five from our original um, quadratic. All right, that bit stays the same. Tidy it all up, replace the minus four squared with a 16, and you get x minus four all squared minus 16 minus five. And our final form is this, all right? x minus 4 all squared minus 21. So that's where the term came from, x plus p squared plus q. So p equals minus 4 and q equals minus 21, all right? Okay. Now let's go back. Um, you remember I said that uh, for the first example, we'll let a equal 1. Well, what happens when a does not equal 1? All right. That makes it a little tougher. And I'll show you a method for that one there. So we want to keep the coefficient. That has to stay the same. All right. But obviously, we need to find a different p and a q for this particular expression. The first thing you do is factorize out the 3 in this particular case. So whatever the coefficient of the x squared is, factorize it out for the first two terms. All right. Now, I know there's different ways of doing it. You can factorize the whole quadratic, divide everything by 3 and put 3 on the outside. Or, as I prefer, just take 3 um, outside of the brackets for the first two x, uh, terms only. All right. So follow through. So I put 3 on the outside, x squared stays as it is, so it's just x squared. But then I have to divide the x by 3. So it's x squared minus 1 third x inside the brackets. And my original minus 1 stays as it is. All right. Then next step, I want to complete the square right, for the bit within the brackets. That bit there. Okay. So using what um, I showed earlier on, okay, take one third, which is your b, and therefore half of b, right, p equals b over two, and therefore p equals one third divided by two, one sixth, all right? That's what we're using over here, all right? So what we have, x in this particular case, um, hang on, it's a minus, just realized, um, minus one third. Okay, so x minus p, if you like, and then all squared minus p squared. So what have I done? x minus one sixth all squared, all right, minus one sixth squared, all right. Remembering that the 3 remains on the outside. Okay, there. So tidy up what's inside the square brackets. So x minus 1 sixth all squared minus 1 over 36. All right. Then we get rid of the square brackets by multiplying back in like that and like that. So we have 3 times x minus 1 sixth all squared minus... 3 over 36, and then the original 1 stays as it is, all right? Putting that all together, and I'm assuming you know your fractions, okay? 1 can be written as 36 over 36. So minus 3 minus 36 is minus 39 over 36. That is the completed square form of that original quadratic. And just to remind you what we started with, 3x squared and minus x minus 1. All right. Those two expressions are absolutely equivalent. Okay. They mean exactly the same thing. Okay. Why do we do this? All right. The uses for um, computing the square and that particular form of a quadratic. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the general quadratic. You know the shape. So there's your graph. You know, just a generic quadratic, U-shaped, all right? And it has a minimum point, okay? As you can see. What the quadratic um, shape does, right, at that minimum point is that that is the lowest point that it'll come to. 
and then it goes back up again after that. So you're sort of going up like that. Right. The completed square form with the P and the Q, they actually give us the coordinates of that minimum point. Okay. And here is something very, very important. Look at this. You have to reverse the sign. of the P, all right? So here, it's a plus inside the brackets. The actual coordinate is minus. So whatever number you have inside the brackets, it must have the opposite sign. The coordinate has the opposite sign, okay? So plus two will go to minus two. Minus five will go to plus five, etc. But the Q, remains the same sign. All right, Q doesn't change, but the P, the actual coordinate, you reverse the sign for that. So the P and Q will give us coordinates of the minimum point, and then there's a second aspect of that. For positive quadratics, i.e. U-shaped ones, where A is a positive number, it'll give us the minimum, all right? But for negative quadratics, where A is negative, then it's an upside-down quadratic, all right? Not the standard U-shape. And in that case, Q will give us the maximum value, the highest point. All right, so bear that in mind again. Q tells us the lowest point or the highest point of the quadratic depending on its shape, all right? And so for the examples above that we did, the first one, x minus four minus 20, was well, x minus four all squared minus 21, has a minimum point at four minus 21. All right, so that's your x, y coordinates. And for the second one, 3 times brackets x minus 1 sixth all squared minus 39 over 36. Again, reverse the sign of the 1 sixth. All right, so from minus it becomes a positive. And the y value is minus 39 over 36. All right. Now, the final thing that you want for this is how to use the computed square form to actually solve a quadratic. I'll give one simple example, again, sticking with the one that we've already used. So once you've got it in the completed square form, all right, it's just a question of rearranging. All right, so putting 21 on the other side, you've got x minus 4 all squared equals 21. Square root both sides. And here, very important, you must have the plus minus. All right, consider both roots. So x minus 4 equals plus minus root 21. And final form, x equals 4 plus minus root 21 are the two roots. So therefore, you've got two solutions, 4 plus root 21 and 4 minus root 21. These are called the exact form or the third form. So if you get a quadratic question um, in some of the more advanced uh, GCSE papers where they say give your answer in exact form or even third form, this is what they're expecting, all right? And obviously sometimes um, you'll get uh, a question that says give it to two decimal places or something, then obviously punch it into your calculator. All right, so that is everything to do with completed square form of the quadratic. If you have any questions, any bits that uh, confused you or not, uh, please do tell me in the comments. Um, they're always very welcome. And any suggestions for future videos, any particular topics you find difficult, um, again, please let me know. I'll be happy to try and do a short video on that. 
And as I said, do subscribe. I will be doing uh, many more videos um, over the next few days and weeks. Thank you very much for watching.